units or quantities to be altered by less than a hair's breadth, the balance would be destroyed and life would not exist. For example, PCW Davies has calculated that a change in the atomic weak force by only one part out of 10 to the 100th power would have prevented a life-permitting universe. The cosmological constant which drives the inflationary expansion of the universe and is responsible for the recently discovered acceleration of the universe's expansion is inexplicably fine-tuned to around one part out of 10 to the 120th power. Roger Penrose of Oxford University has calculated that the odds of the universe's initial low entropy condition obtaining by chance alone are on the order of one chance out of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123. Penrose comments, I cannot even recall seeing anything else in physics whose accuracy is known to approach even remotely a figure like one part in 10 to the 10 to the 123. And it's not just each constant and quantity which must be finely tuned. Their ratios to one another must also be finely tuned. So improbability is multiplied by improbability by improbability until our minds are reeling in incomprehensible numbers. Now, there are only three possibilities for explaining the presence of this remarkable fine-tuning of the universe mentioned in premise one on your handout. The fine-tuning of the universe is due to either physical necessity, chance, or design. The first alternative, physical necessity, holds that there is some unknown theory of everything which would explain why the universe is the way it is. It, it had to be that way. And there was really no chance or little chance of the universe's not being life permitting. By contrast, the second alternative states that the fine tuning is due entirely to chance. It's just an accident that the universe is life permitting and we're the lucky beneficiaries. The third alternative rejects both of these accounts in favor of an intelligent mind behind the cosmos who designed the universe to permit life. And the question is, which of these alternatives is the most plausible? Well, the first alternative seems extraordinarily implausible because, as we've seen, the constants and quantities are independent of the laws of nature. The laws of nature are consistent with a wide range of values for these constants and quantities. For example, the most promising candidate for a theory of everything to date, a uh, superstring theory or so-called M theory, predicts that there is a cosmic landscape, so to speak, of around 10 to the 500th power possible universes which are consistent with the present laws of nature. So that it does nothing to render the observed values of the constants and quantities physically necessary. So what about the second alternative, that the fine-tuning of the universe is due to chance? Well, the problem with this alternative is that the odds against the universe's being life permitting are so incomprehensibly great that they cannot be reasonably faced even though there will be a huge number of life-permitting universes lying within the cosmic landscape. Nevertheless, the percentage of life-permitting worlds will be unfathomably tiny compared to the entire landscape. So that a randomly thrown dart in the direction of the landscape has no meaningful chance of striking a life-permitting world. In order to rescue the alternative of chance, its proponents have there been, uh, therefore been forced to adopt a radical metaphysical hypothesis. Namely, that there exists an infinite number of randomly ordered universes composing a sort of world ensemble or multiverse of which our universe is but a part. Somewhere in this infinite world ensemble, finely tuned universes will appear by chance alone, and we happen to be 
one such world. There are, however, at least two major failings of the world ensemble hypothesis. First, there's no evidence that a world ensemble even exists. No one knows if there are even any other universes at all, much less uh, a randomly ordered infinite number of them. Moreover, recall that Borg, Guth, and Vilenkin proved that any universe in a state of continuous expansion cannot be infinite in the past. Their theorem applies to the multiverse as well. Therefore, since its past is finite, only a finite number of other universes may have been generated by now, so that there's no guarantee that a finely tuned universe will have appeared somewhere in the ensemble. Secondly, and even more fundamentally, if our universe is just a random member of an infinite world ensemble, then it is infinitely more probable that we should be observing a much different universe than what we in fact observe. Roger Penrose has calculated that it is inconceivably more probable that our solar system should suddenly form by a random collision of particles than the finely tuned universe should exist. Penrose calls it utter chicken feed by comparison. So, if our universe were just a random member of a world ensemble, it is inconceivably more probable that we should be observing an ordered region no larger than our solar system. For there are far more universes in the world ensemble in which our solar system comes into being instantaneously as a result of the random collision of particles than universes which are fine-tuned for intelligent life. Or again, if our universe were just a random member of an infinite world ensemble, then we ought to be observing highly extraordinary events like horses popping into and going out of being through the random collision of particles. Since such things are vastly more probable than all of nature's constants and quantities falling into the infinitesimal life-permitting range, observable universes like those are simply far, far more plenteous in the world ensemble than worlds like ours, and therefore ought to be observed by us. Since we do not have such observations, that fact strongly disconfirms the world ensemble hypothesis. On atheism, at least, it is therefore highly probable that there is no world ensemble. It seems, then, that premise to the fine-tuning is not due to physical necessity or to chance, from which it follows three, therefore, it is due to design. Now, detractors of design sometimes object that on this hypothesis, the cosmic designer remains unexplained. It's said that an intelligent mind also exhibits complex order, so that if the universe needs an explanation, so does its designer. If the designer does not need an explanation, then why think that the universe does? This objection is based upon a misconception of the nature of explanation. It's widely recognized that in order for an explanation to be the best, you don't need to have an explanation of the explanation. In fact, if you think about it, so requiring would immediately generate an 